Hey guys, it's May May and it's time to do the outside of our stationary gift box or our altered box. Let me show you the inside. This is what the inside is looking like. We've got our tags and our envelopes, our little birthday book, and we also have some cards. This is obviously for my mom because of the E. But now what we're going to do is the outside. Now, I, if you have not seen part one or part two, I'll be sure to link them in the description for you and also in the I card above. Hey guys, go ahead and consider subscribing to my channel. It's free. It doesn't cost you a thing, but it will allow you to set notifications with the little bell so you'll always know when I upload a video. So let's do the front of this. Let me show you the three pieces that I'm going to be using. They are, are the main three pieces, okay? I'm going to be using my buffalo check or my gingham, whatever you want to call that. This black floral, which has been my favorite throughout the whole project, and this piece, which may surprise you because it doesn't match and it's not the perfect piece for this, it does match because Mente has a different style and it does match. But truth of the matter is, it's not my favorite piece. So you know I like to use my least favorite pieces on the bottoms of things, right? So I'm going to utilize this on the bottom. All right, so let's start with some measuring. Now what you might want to do to save yourself a little time is just get yourself a little notepad or a little post-it note and just kind of run through and measure and write it all down as you go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is measure the top. Now this top has a beveled edge, very slight beveled edge, and I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna measure to that edge. I kind of want that edge to show. I'm not gonna cover it up. So this is where I have to get a little bit specific. Actually, I worked out really well. I'm gonna cut this top piece eight and one quarter. All right, so my first measure on the top is eight and one fourth by, and this is where I have to get very specific. It looks as though I'm going to need to cut this at 8 and 1 16th. Now, I don't have a problem with that, but I will show you a trick in a minute that if you can't get exactly to that, we can fix it. So that means the top and the bottom should be the same, but if you don't trust it, just flip this guy over and go ahead and measure the bottom as well, just to be sure. And see, this bottom is a little bit bigger. This one is almost 8 and 3 eighths. So I'm going to do this one at 8 and... 5 16ths by 8 inches. Isn't that something? It's just wood. That's the way wood is, the nature of it. All right, so I've measured this side and made a decision. So I want to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to treat this as one piece, even though this door opens, right, and it's really two pieces, but I want my pattern to be seamless on the sides. So I'm going to treat it as one piece. The first measurement I want to make is I want to measure from the top to the edge. And that gives me one and just about three quarters. One and three quarters is a little bit wide, but I can trim it as we go. Now let's talk about this on the corners. These corners are rounded and I love that, but I don't want to put paper over them in the way I'm doing it. If I were going to put paper on, over these, I would want to use longer strips that wrapped around but the way I'm doing it is cutting them kind of flush. So I'm gonna go from that dovetailed piece to that dovetailed piece. And you'll see what I mean. When you get this in person, there's little like dovetail um, connections on the end. So that means I need to cut a piece here that is seven and a half inches, okay? All this will make sense as we get going. Now I'm gonna measure all sides the same way, even the part with the hinges, okay? We'll deal with the hinges in a little bit, but I'm gonna measure it the same way. All right, so let me go and measure the box and we'll get right back together. So I got my pieces cut for the front and the sides. Now what I have to do is measure where to slice them. So remember this box opens, right? So I'm gonna measure the top portion and the top gives me three quarters of an inch, okay? So three quarters of an inch to the, um, to the opening. So I'm gonna check this side as well, three quarters. I'm gonna check all sides just to be sure that three quarters is my number. And the reason I'm doing this is because if they're different, I want to evaluate each piece differently. And I also want to point out that this is not the center of your strip, okay? The top is a little more shallow than the bottom. So you want to make sure you measure. Don't just slice these in half. That won't work. All right, so what will work now is I can cut these at three-fourths of an inch and I'll have my pieces ready to start putting on the box. So there's one piece. So just cutting them at three quarters of an inch, and then these should line up pretty well spot on. All right, so I've laid these out so you can see. These are shorter than these guys. We slice them, and because we did them that way, our patterns are gonna match up. See that? So I don't need these guys right now, and I will tell you, it's better just to leave these with their little pattern piece laid out like they need to be. It's a lot easier. So let's go to the box again. 
And now I can start assembling these. So the shorter pieces are for the sides, okay? Because our box, again, is not a square. So this is where one short piece would go. Now, you remember how I told you that it might be too big and I might need to do a little bit of slicing? I think I'm going to take this to my trimmer and trim off like a sixteenth of an inch just to make this fit a little better. So I will be evaluating each piece that way. I know it's a little more work, but I feel like we'll get a better um, lay on the box if we trim each piece individually. There's another thing I need to tell you. Although this fits perfectly, I'm not going to trim from the center because that's where my pattern matches up. I want to trim from the top where my pattern um, it won't matter if I take some off the pattern. Now, I want to say this to you. Please don't stress about patterns. I know that it's hard not to, but there, I just don't stress about them. I am today for this box in particular, but there is just literally no need to stress about the patterns. It, I mean, if you can and if you want to, that's great, but it's not going to ruin the effect of your box. So you can see just how tiny I took off, just a little bit, and now I feel like that will fit so much better here and it will make sure that my box will be able to close because I can glue it right flush and give myself some space. And see how I get that little raw edge, which I really like. So now let's measure the bottom of this one. Take this one off. And let's see what the bottom looks like. And I may want to do the same thing, and I do. I want to cut another 16th of an inch off of this one, but this time I'm going to cut it off the bottom of the pattern. just so my patterns will still match up. And that's a that's a thick 16th of an inch I'm taking off. It's a little more than, but it works. All right, let's glue these on so you can see how that works. So I'm gonna put my box up here, get my little piece. You might wanna do a dry run of your patterns if, you, if that matters to you. That looks good. So let's get this top piece off. I just turned it when I brought it down. I'm trying to be specific, there we go. And I'm just using my art glitter glue. It's my favorite. It'll work just fine. Putting that on there. And then what I want to do is lay it at the center, but not overlapping it. Kind of like we do with score lines. We don't want to overlap that center piece because we don't want to create any bulk. So I'm just laying that piece in. That's going to be so pretty. Rub that down really nice. Okay, and then I'm going to do the bottom. I'm going to check my pattern again. Make sure I'm holding it right. I am, let's flip it over, right? And then I'm gonna lay this one down. Now, oddly enough, this box, the bottom edge kind of lifts out higher than the top. Um, I don't know how to explain that, but the this bottom part is overhanging the top part for me slightly. So I could take this all the way up to that little edge, but I kind of like having that little um, separation there so I get no um, resistance when this guy shuts. Look how good that looks. It's pretty much lined up perfect. It's not perfect. I'm not going to stress about it. All right, let's do the other side the same way. All right, so I have both of the sides covered. I'll show you this side, and I'll show you that side. Now let's do the back. Now let me tell you something. If you are so inclined, you could take these hinges off and put the uh, paper underneath them. It wouldn't be that big of a deal. You just need a small um, screwdriver. I'm not that inclined. I literally don't want to do that much work. I'm just like that. So what I'm gonna do is make some marks and trim out. So this is my little piece that's gonna go right here. And you could just cover those hinges up now that I look at it, which might be just as pretty to do. Hmm. Notice how the hinge changes things with your paper and how it's hanging over. That's why you wanna evaluate every piece individually. I think I'm gonna trim this off and see if I don't wanna just cover those hinges up. Let's see, I need to cut about 3 sixteenths of an inch off of this one. So 3 sixteenths, that's a little bit much. I'm gonna come back just a little bit because I can always trim more off if I need to. So let's see how that lays. I didn't think about just covering those hinges up. I was gonna like cut them out, but why not cover it up? Because the mechanism is gonna be fine anyway, and I think that will look really pretty glued straight down like that. Plus, this will be to the back of her desk. She's not gonna have this toward the front. All right, let me see if my patterns line up. Yep, that's how they line up. So I need to trim the same amount off the top of this one. Did you see me flip it so I would get it to the right side? So the same amount off the top of this one. And then that should lay over the top of those hinges. That's easy, I like that. All right, so let's glue these pieces on. So I'm gonna check my pattern. I'm gonna keep it laid down so I can do it. I'll lift it up and show you when I get it done. Perfect. All right, let's lay this on. 
Now, if you wanted to, you could, like I said, take those hinges off and then put them back on, or you could just make marks where it is and cut out holes for it. But I think this is gonna be really cute to kind of cover up the workings. I'll have to work with it for a second and get it all to kind of meld into place, but that's not a big deal. It will do it. See there, that doesn't look bad at all. And I know this is not how everybody, oh, let's see if that'll stay. I know this is not how everybody would want to do it and that's okay. You do you. If you like to be a little more, like I'm saying, you could totally just make a little mark and cut that spot out, but I'm not going to. I'm trying to do this where you can see it happen. So I do have to kind of rub it down. That's okay. Get that on there. I kind of press it around those hinges a little bit. Rub, 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 and get that glued it here down. All right, so there's my paper on the back. And look, it does not mess with the opening and closing because the hinges aren't it obstructed at all, okay? So I'm gonna leave that that way. And now I'm gonna do the front. I think for the front, I'm definitely gonna be doing some trimming out, but let me see how I wanna do that. So let me show you this. So let's say I wanna cut this little hinge out, okay? I've got myself a pencil. I'm lining this guy up where it's gonna go. And I'm gonna make a mark from the edge of my, let me get my pencil lead out. From the edge of my little hinge right here, just right past that edge, okay? and then right past that edge on this side to let me know where I need to cut it out. And then I'm gonna measure and see just how high up I need to cut. I was thinking that's about it. It's right at about three, six, nope, it's one, one, two, three, four, six tenths of an inch. So what that means is a little bigger than a quarter of an inch. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. This is gonna make you cringe. I'm sorry, some people cringe and I, and I get it. I'm going to eyeball this. And my fussy cutting scissors are across the room, so we're gonna use these. I'm gonna eyeball this right about here. I don't think that's quite enough and that's okay. We can go back and look and trim that one. And then I'm just gonna come in and cut this away. You could do this on your trimmer too if you needed to, but I'm just gonna take my time and I'm kind of using the pattern to help me be as straight as I can. So there's that and let's see what it did. I feel like I need to take more off. Just the tiniest bit, just the tiniest bit. So I'm gonna snip in and do just a little bit more. You know, you could also use your craft knife. If you needed to, you could just pull that out and use it. But I'm just gonna do this like this. Okay, let's see how that looks. I feel like this one should be right. Look at there. That is gonna be just right. And that way, I can still have my paper covering the whole of the front and my hinge or my little bracket there, my closure won't be obstructed. I do think I need to trim a little off the top because I'm noticing if I get this to the opening and closing line that it's hanging over a bit there. So I'm gonna trim that a tiny bit too. I'm gonna do that with the trimmer though. I'm just gonna trim a sliver off. I want you guys to know something. This is just how I'm doing this box. There are hundreds of ways to do this kind of thing, and you can totally make this your own. If there's something I say all the time, it is you do you. And if you want to do this box in different ways, I mean, this is this is a simple altered box. There are lots of things you can do differently or add to it. So please feel empowered to do that. I don't want you to think that I'm saying, no, this is the only way you can make this box. You you play in whatever way you want to do it. If you don't like the way I'm doing it, please feel free to do it your way. I just want to make sure I say that because when I do these videos, I just do it to show you how I do it. This is not the only way or the end-all be-all. There are so many different ways to alter boxes. All right, I'm going to do the same thing down here. We'll get right back together. So there we go. With very minimal effort, we got all sides covered. I don't think that was too bad. Those look kind of pretty. But what's really going to dress it up is when we do the top. I don't want to do the top just yet. I'm going to flip it over and do the bottom first. I'm going to remove this sticker if I can, just so it doesn't show through. And I'm going to cut my bottom piece based on those measurements that I had earlier. So for my bottom, there they are. All right, let me cut this and we'll get back together. All right, so I got my sides done and here's the bottom piece. So I'm gonna glue this down to the bottom really quick. This paper's gorgeous, top or bottom. I could put this on the bottom, it wouldn't matter, but I'm gonna put that solid piece down. Make sure I lay it right. It's a rectangle, not a square, there we go. All right, and then what I'm trying to do is make sure I'm not hanging over the edges on the sides. I'm not worried about the corners yet. I'm gonna show you my trick for the corners. I just don't want to be laying over the edges of the sides. 
and I'll show you why. All right, so here's my trick for the corners. I always keep a nail file at my um, work surface or in my tool bin. And here's what I'm gonna do. On these corners, rather than trying to cut them perfect, look at that, that just instantly makes that perfect. It's so cool. I wanna show you beforehand. So you see that little piece right there. And then I bring it down here and I just run my nail file around. I'm trying not to hit the pages underneath, but now look, that corner is perfect right to the edge of the box. So that's what I'm gonna do on all four sides. A piece I need to clean up a little bit more. There we go. And then one more side. Oh, did I get them off? Nope, this one right here. And this one doesn't need much at all, if any. So I'm just gonna hit it like that. And there we go, our bottom is covered. Perfect. Now we get to do the fun part. I always save the fun part for last because this is the one I've been looking forward to. Let me cut my piece for here and go ahead and glue it down and do the edges and then we'll decorate. So there you go, there's the top and all the sides covered. I really like how this looks. Remember, you can always paint the box and do some distress ink and stuff, but because I'm using this one mostly white and kind of sticking with the blonde color of the wood, I'm not doing that and I love how it's turning out. All right, so I got some little sanding on there where I did the corners, clean that off. Now let me show you what I'm gonna do. So my plan is either in one corner, or I kind of want to go to one corner or a little bit off center, is to put this as a focal point on the front, kind of low, and then I'm gonna use some pretty little pieces to go around it. I can see here that I want to put another pale piece around this so it'll really pop. Um, but on this little piece, I want to stamp mom's initial. I think this will be cute. So I'm gonna stamp on this little guy real quick. So just using some onyx black here. And I'm gonna put this E right here. I think this will be cute on here. Just to make it a little more custom, how cute is that? Okay, so I have to decide where I want this. I might even want to lay it a little, I don't know. I kinda wanna go to this corner, but because I wanna put some pretties around it, I'm kinda scared to go straight to the corner with it. But look, I cut that little piece so that would really pop. And then this will really pop off the front there. And I wanna use pieces from the mente paper from the, um, the little fussy cutting pieces to kind of put around this. I just think this is so pretty. I always tend to put a little belt here and I'm kind of tempted to do that here as well. Like another little accent piece across here. Let me see what scraps I have that I can use. So let's say I went straight with it, which I typically go straight, right? And then I took some of these scraps of um, the Buffalo check and did it like this to kind of break up the center. I just have a couple of these, like four of these um, little scraps. Of course I would cut them down but I kind of like that and then decorate the corners and some of the little, I kind of like that. It's not centered, but I think that's what I'm gonna do. So let's get these laid out just right. So I'm gonna glue these down directly and don't worry about that skip in the middle. That'll be covered by our decoration. This is gonna be pretty. And I'm gonna use my camera to try to help me get it centered. Of course I could measure, but y'all know I'm just not that person. I just eyeball. By the time it's all done, it won't, it won't be bad. I like the separation. I love the check and the floral. Y'all know me. I love check mixed with floral. All right, so let's lay this one down here and then I wanna match it up with that piece. I need to bring it down a little bit. I'm trying to take it right to the edge. So I typically do one of those little belt-like pieces. I, that's just a thing for me. I still could angle this and I, I'm just tempted to angle it. How about this time, because I never do, I do it on an angle, because I like that. Isn't that pretty, like it's just kind of laid there? So I'm gonna do that, and then we'll put our little floral pieces on. Now, I'm not adding dimension. You could totally pop this up on foam. I'm not going to, because again, if mom, I've said this in the past, if she wants to sit something on this box, which she could, you know, on her work surface, things could get crowded, not my mother's work surface. She's a very neat, tidy person. But if it were to get crowded like mine, then she could still sit something on it and it wouldn't flatten out any of the decoration on the front. Now, I say that about this. I'm probably gonna get some dimension from the flowers and things I'm gonna put on. I don't know if it's gonna be flowers. I don't know what I'm gonna add, but I'm gonna try not to do very, a lot of dimension. I don't want it to get damaged whenever, if it were to get something sitting on it. Anywhere you look at this paper, it's pretty. It does not matter. And then her little initial, just like so. And now for the fun part, I'm gonna go find what I'm gonna glue down around it. Oh, it's looking good. So rather than have you guys watch me fussy cut again for a little bit, I went ahead and found these flowers on the cut apart sheet and I fussy cut them 
just bubble cut, very loosely, nothing perfect. And let me show you where they're gonna go, I think. I love this one in this bottom corner, like this, and I really, really, really like this one up here, kind of flanking her um, initial. And then this one green leaf needed to go right here. I cut away, there was a very pale leaf there, and I cut it away, but I thought I needed to add some green back there. And look how pretty this is. Now I'm gonna be gluing these straight down, but you can totally pop these up on foam and they would be beautiful like that. But because I don't wanna take a chance of anything getting ripped off or messed up if she has to lay something down on her desk on top of it, I'm gonna glue this straight down. Now this is just personal preference. Remember, think about the person you're giving it to and decide how they might like it. But I'm gonna just glue this down. And if I were distressing this box, if I was making it more rustic or more distressed, I would ink these flowers and you could too. Um, on camera, they get washed out because white gets washed out on camera, but they don't look washed out here. I can really see them well. So that's how I'm gonna do it. Again, you do you on your boxes. If you like it, change it. Or if you don't like it, change it, I guess I should say. Do what makes you happy and what will make the recipient happy. Now that I've got this upside down, I might want to do it this way. Nope, I want to go back to my original plan, which was this way. And before I stick that side down, I'm going to tuck this green leaf in. Now, you know I have to add some pearls. My mom's a pearl girl. So here's the thing. I'm not worried about these getting something sat on them. I know that you're saying, well, you're not going to put dimension on. These won't hurt anything if something sits down on them. This won't be any problem because they're stuck straight down to the page and they are, um, you know, solid. They won't get flat. So I'm going to just add some pearls here and there. And these are pretty sticky. You might want to add a little glue to the back. Look how the little pearls just really set it off. And have these little ones that I'm going to use too, or I might use. I'm trying to decide where I want to put things. Just some pearls there and there. And let me see if I want to put some of these little ones kind of in the flowers. Now, I'm dangerous with pearls. I could keep going. But notice that I put some here as a little cluster in the center and a few there. And that is that. Now, there was one thing I wanted to do. And I said, y'all don't let me forget to do this. I wanted to put her initial on these envelopes. So, I'm going to do that real quick before we call it quits. And then that will be one present done. So, let me show you what my plan is here. So I just think as one more touch to make it a little custom, it would be really pretty to stamp an E back here. And I'm either gonna put it here or here. I can't decide, I think on here, I like it there. So I'm just gonna run through all of her envelopes and stamp a little E on them like that. I think that'll be so pretty. All stamped and ready to go back into the box. And let's see if the E will show if I turn these this way instead of the way I had them in here before. Oh, it's close to showing, but now you can tell those are envelopes too because I turned them where the little flap is out. Isn't that cute? All right, the only thing left to do is add stamps and a pen. Let me go get the pen. So these are little mini gel pens that I get from Amazon, and I'm hoping, yes, it's just right for that little spot, just like that. So now she has a little pen, she has her little twine, and stamps will go right there. Perfect. Very good. I like this. I think mom's going to like it too. So that is how I would make the stationary box using the little cigar box. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. It was super fun to do. I love making these. They're fun and easy. And I heard you. You all said if I make one for Jenna, you want to see it. So watch for that video to come as well. Thanks so much, guys. If you make one of these, I want to see it. Head to our website at memememadeit.com and share your photos in our customer gallery. Don't forget to subscribe. Be sure to like the video by giving it a thumbs up and set your notification bell so you can always get notified whenever I put up a video. Thanks so much, guys. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.